Well, if you can believe it, we actually, I can't ever forget, my head's backwards on this thing. Um, we got on a little early, actually, two minutes early. I know. Shocker. Yeah, well, you know, when it's just the two of us and... Well, we got three or four more. And he graciously bought dinner tonight, so I didn't have to cook. Yeah. That makes life good. <laughs> all right, you hearing us? Hi, Amy. Are you all hearing us out there okay? All right. Thanks. Oh, yeah. There's my friend, Amy. Yep. Rip seven. Woo, woo. Man, I get too many more. I'll have to start talking. Yeah, great. Hello from Idaho. Hey, today was actually interesting. We had a it was cold this morning, you know, in the forties. Then it got warm this afternoon. It was very hot. I'm not sure how hot it got, but it was kind of surprising how. Well, because we've right. been having cold the whole time. Then we got more rain coming, don't we? Yeah, we had. What did she say? Well, no, we eleven were in, inches of rain. Eleven inches. We were. Number two in the wettest spring. In the wettest spring. Yeah. But that's just, you know, I realized that's just spring. But we've had a whole ton of rain for months now. Uh, it's April. So a couple months. But we'll be grateful this summer when they well, when the rest of the pool don't run out of water. And apparently it was good because, you know, the melt stays cool up there. Hey, Sydney, Australia. There you are, Rebecca. Jones. Oh, Welcome. one of my favorite cities. Yeah, I somebody. Uh, to uh, my daughter time. told us that it. Uh, yeah, I got the seventy-four this afternoon. Yeah, we were. Daughters told us there was somebody from Sydney who joined. I don't know what time is it in Sydney right now. It's got to be like I don't know, seven in the morning or something. I like have that. no idea. I can't remember how many hours it is between there. But, and us. Boy, they're dedicated to get up and listen to you. Yeah, I don't know why anybody would. No. Yeah, crazy amount of rain. It was like 11 inches just this spring. It's crazy. Yeah, it's been bad. I feel like I'm Seattle. I'm telling people I have to go buy Gore-Tex pretty soon. Everything will start molding. <laughs> oh, there you are. Just go home. There's our son. Just arrived home. Did you go get some dinner? No, I'm doing my own work. Okay. Where is this? Where is what? Oh, talk Te to your sister. Yeah, Tegan was going okay, to... No, no, no. Tegan was driving over when Jeff got home and then drive home with Jeff in her car, is what she said. Big Sis has his truck. Yeah. You know, you don't play with baby. Actually, his truck's name is Clifford. A big red truck. So, you better get going or people are going to hang up on you. Well, it's just 731. <laughs> She's got to go attack the... She has been on guard. <coughs> Murray, the the Murray rainforest is what she says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've, we've already eaten. eaten. Thanks. We've eaten. Thanks, man. All right, Derek. All right. I'm going to start with um, some questions that I have saved off for the last couple of weeks and didn't come with answers. And so I'm going to start with those first. Uh, because those are ones that we, I said I'd go find out more information. So, um, so Colin, Colin asked about the desire to have custom lists where you can, you know, put people in lists. But he had he had other things like, show me all the descendants of ancestors who were born in England between 1837 and 2018. Ooh. Or there was another one he said, uh, descendants of ancestor X and ancestor Y and ancestor Z that have duplicate records. Hmm. And so all this is a beautiful and wonderful stuff, and it's nice sounding, and it's a nice idea. But, but um, you know, there, there are a couple of places where you have lists of things. There's a list based on recents, but it, but it changes regularly and only holds 50. Mm -hmm. Others do watches. I just wanted to give you that. Others do watches uh, to keep a list of people they care about or are working on. So others are using the watch list to sort of maintain their sort of personal list they want to keep track of. But uh, in in thinking about this, I, this kind of uh, a list that has all this descendants 
would probably be very, very frustrated, frustrating for you because uh, that list could change dynamically a lot. Just changing one or two, one or two relationships, uh, oh, yeah. say halfway through the tree could change, you know, you could, you could have, uh, you know, a thousand or 50, you know, 10,000 yeah. different people all of a sudden on your list. And so I think that would be really frustrating pe for people because they're starting to work through this list and all of a sudden boom, it all changes because somebody added a you know new relationship in there or changed the person in the relationship. A little bit of new data. So I think, I think although it's an interesting idea, I think it's probably not reasonable or feasible. It's, it's possible to do, but I think that list would change so dynamically you'd be frustrated at it. Uh, Monique said that she loved the chronological automatic ordering or automatic ordering of sources. So the no, so she's never going no no longer going to worry about adding a title and just putting it in there. And then she asked if someone manually orders the sources in a different order. I see this as an option. Will that show up for everyone that way or just the person that changed the order? And the answer is. Changing between sorted or custom sort changes the list for everyone, meaning if someone changes the custom sort, it changes it for all who visit that person. The auto sort, of course, uh, looks the same for everyone unless they edit the data or the date value and the, and the date value edit changes uh, it for all. So whether it's a custom sort or whether it's sorted by date, uh, th that view is the same for everybody. So you don't have your own personal custom order versus another person who goes to that that person in the tree. Hmm. And that's on purpose because we want everybody to see the same things. And But we did provide the two ways of ordering. Uh, Je Jessica asks, on the website, I can sort sources by date. Is this going to be available on the app? I'm assuming that means the Family Tree app. And the answer is we're still evaluating but have no plans at this time. Um to do that, but I, but that's a good question, and we'll pursue that. I'll continue to pursue that with the uh, mobile team. Janice says, "Is there any way to leave a warning to have a warning or a pop up on the edit page when people go to change information? All my dates and places are sourced and show on the edit page. A warning like, are you sure you want to do this? Uh, please check the sources first. It's frustrating when people change correct information. I agree with you." I understand the issue, and it is a problem. But uh, we are investigating different ways to resist change. Realize if we make changes that this applies to everyone making changes, right? So if we, we make it harder to make changes, that means it's harder for you to make changes and harder for everybody else to make changes as well. But we, so we want to be very careful and not make it so difficult that no one can make the change to make the corrections. We consider this, you know, I consider this uh, one of our biggest challenges that we are focusing on. We call it the art of the community tree. And it, it, this is one of the hardest things. We've got probably uh, two, one to two dozen ideas that we're investigating on, things that we can do to help people uh, be a little bit more observant and be a little bit more careful. And, uh, you know, we're still working on it. We'll, we'll start releasing some of these things in the next while. Uh, so you'll see them. Lisa, she said, we love the ordinance ready feature. She says, uh, as a female, I only receive female names for my family. Is there any way to receive a female name from my husband's side of the family? And the answer to this is, uh, this has a lot of issues, and we have yet to determine how to manage this. So we, we've thought about that originally in the very beginning. But some of the main issues that are involved is we don't know the status of your marriage, meaning that some spouses don't allow other spouses to do the ordinances on their lines. Mm -hmm. There are some spouses that say, I, I do my line, you do your line, you stay away from my line. Well, we don't know that, even though your spouse's line may be represented, represented in your line that you have put together. Also, if there's a divorce between you and your spouse, then you technically no longer have permission to do your spouse's line. You'd have to go get permission from them, have them fill out a form that's available from support to give you permission to do their line. And since we are not sure 
how to know this properly to allow it to happen, uh, then we haven't done anything. You know, one possible solution that we are working on is this shared family groups, which someone's already talked about uh, in the questions there. We'll, so we'll, we'll answer a little more about that. Uh, the shared family groups will have their own reservation list. And so one possible solution is to this, that, that is that uh, you, uh, you reserve stuff through your line, your husband reserves things through their line, or a spouse reserves things through their line, and then you share that data to this shared family group reservation list. And then when those, when we have that feature of a shared family group reservation list, then Ordnance Ready will automatically include that, any groups that you're a member of, automatically go through and pull names out of that list and hand them to you as part of your reservation list, since you're a member of that shared family group list. And then it'll snag goes on out and it's out of there. So that way, if your husband puts things in the reservation list and you put things in the reservation in that shared reservation list. You both push ordinance ready and you both get each other's stuff. Okay. That's happened. Nathan said sometimes the identity of a person changes between the time the ordinance cards are printed and the time the ordinances are actually completed. So his example was like this is Bill from Missouri, born in born to John and Susan, and somebody changes it to Will from Bill from Kentucky, from Missouri to Kentucky, and it has the parents of James and Sally, which is very different from the other thing. And the answer is um, the temple system is not aware of these deep kind of changes like this, and they don't alert anyone. So if you see or make these changes, my recommendation is to create a support case and have them examine the ordinances on the person. If you're concerned about this and there's big changes that have happened, or you're considering making these big changes, you can go create a support case and then they will go in there and look at the ordinances on that person and uh, get them uh, uh, properly placed and corrected. That's why we really need to encourage people not to make massive changes to one person, but instead um, create a new person and uh, disconnect the other person and put that new person in there. That way the ordinances stay where they're supposed to be. That's one of the things that we're examining on how to do that with the uh, detection and impedance, right? If we see somebody making massive changes on a person and it has ordinances on it, we may alert the person. That's one of the things we're thinking about. We alert the person, uh, we're going to revert this back to the original person, and we recommend that you – and we'll take your data and create a new person for you or something to kind of discourage wholesale changes to persons like that. New names, new births and deaths, and new parents and kids. So that's just not a good idea to do, and we're not really uh, alerting people to that. All right, Wallace says uh, he wants the notes field in sources to support columns. And uh, that's really great. That would be wonderful. Uh, we currently don't have any plans to do this, and uh, we'll keep it on the list to think about, but you need to understand that doing tables inside of anything is extremely difficult. And uh, we're just, we're not in the, in the business of creating, you know, Word documents or any kind of proce uh, word processing kind of capabilities inside of notes. Um, so... Um, you know, it's it's unclear whether we would ever consider doing this. That's all I'm saying. We'll, we'll keep it on the list and keep it in mind, but it's very difficult to do. I can understand why you use it. If you think of, for those who know Word and Office, you know, they don't even do it. What they do is they they, they do a, the structure of a Excel spreadsheet and embed it inside of Word mm -hmm. because they don't want to develop it on Word. Yeah. They just figure out a way to embed a spreadsheet in the middle of it. So um, so that's really difficult anyway. Mary, and I'm, I'm getting down there. I'm, I'm going to just be a little bit longer. Mary says, why can't I view discussions attached to a person under the Collaborate tab on the website on the Family Tree mobile app? And it's, that's a good suggestion, and we will need to examine to see if this is feasible on the mobile app. I think there's value in having the discussions there. The first thing we did with the mobile app is make sure you had all of the features you needed to be able to enter people, connect them, reserve them, 
and submit them for uh, and take them for temple work. That was our first goal. Mm -hmm. We've achieved that plus more things. So this is a good one for us to put on our uh, would love to have list. Christy, how many people can you have on your consultant planner? Currently, there's no enforced limit, although I would expect that once you get so many people on it, it'll probably slow down a little bit. But I haven't heard anybody reporting that they had so many on the list that it wasn't working. And I contacted the, the team that's over the development of this, and they currently have no limit uh, set. Uh, Debbie says, when a temple closes for renovation, what happens with the names that were shared with that temple? And the answer mm -hmm. is, they're still in the same temple district, so they sit there. Now, another temple district who has needs for that ordinance may pull it from that temple district, but they don't shuffle off to another temple district. However, I'll remind you that probably by the middle of next year, earlier middle next year, we will have changed the whole setup for temple inventory and temple districts will no longer be part of the equation. It's going to be global. And when we do that, it's a global uh, temple list. And so all of the shared ordinances we will be sent to all of the temples first in and first out. So the one that's been on the list the longest will be the first one taken care of and it'll be sent to temples that can support that language. So for instance, we wouldn't send English names to uh, China for uh, Hong Kong or to Korea, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, Shelly says, uh, when the same kind of thing, when the Salt Lake Temple closes for four years, what will happen to the names? Well, they'll sit there in the district, but in the next, you know, early next year, early mid next year, that'll all get spread out to everywhere in the world. So. It'll sit there for a little bit, but then it'll get spread out. And the Salt Lake Temple is going to take like four years. So way big. before it's done, those ordinances will That's be pulled from saying. other uh, temples. Um, next one I have an answer for. There's one from by uh, Curtis that I have to answer next time. Mike said, uh, in the recommended task pane on the website, the records hints are listed as records. In the family tree app, in the task menu, the same uh, hints are listed as hints. Why is there a difference? Well, the mobile app did it first, and they created a thing called a task list, and it has all of the tasks mixed together. Uh, and then after we did that, and it was such a hit on the mobile app, we decided we needed to have it on the website. And so the team that worked on the website one, they tried to be a little bit more uh, feature rich and so it's still the same thing if you look at it that list that's showing on the home page is actually says recommended tasks that's the name of it is recommended tasks that matches quick task on the mobile app but then they provide you and it's the same stuff on the mobile app or on the website it's still hints and it's still records and they're just allowing you to say I only want to look at records or I only want to look at temple things and so they just done a little enhancement to that uh, I don't know if we're going to change the mobile one yet, but they're both showing the same data, essentially. Uh, somebody asked, what's the messages plan for the organization? You know, wanting to see about changes. And the answer is we have a messaging plan and are doing more blogs, emails, and announcements than before. But the changes are so many that we only message significant changes. Like with the last one that I'm aware of was we put a – a blog article out about um, we're doing some standardization of dates and places for you so that you don't have to see the data problem and go fix it. We're going to attempt to fix it. We put that out like the 28th, and then today, the 30th, we started that work. And, uh, and then also we're working to finalize the, the – uh, messaging around ordinances ready and how that works and and uh, what we've released and and so you'll start seeing more of that okay a couple more a uh, couple more and then we're done and we can go take some uh, live <gasps> and some of yours Jane. yeah uh, they said why does view my relationship on the web not show both in a couple at the top and the answer is this is now working so there was an issue where they didn't show them and that's been fixed so now you'll see both uh, parents at the top of the list. Uh, helper planner show data problems. When will the helper planner show data problems? Well, it really does now. It's not a separate category, but the help planner took our fan chart that we did for Family Tree 
which includes uh, data problems as part of research suggestions. And so you'll be able to see data problems in there uh, by looking at that fan chart and seeing and picking research suggestions and you'll see both research suggestions and data problems on that um, on that view. Okay, I've got like four other, one, two, three, four, five questions that I didn't answer and I'll work on having those answers for next time. Wow. Well, I gotta get a drink now. <coughs> By the way, I don't know if he said anything, but thank you for all the nice birthday wishes that you sent to me. I wasn't able to be here last time, and I had asked him to do it, but if not, thank you. I did. I did it, but ah. it doesn't hurt to say it again. No, it was very much appreciated. It was very nice. Thanks. Okay, so I'll run through here for some people that asked questions. Uh, Keith asked, uh, can you talk a little bit about the family group experience? I was invited to start a family group, and I have started inviting family members. So what we're doing now, it's on the mobile app. It's only on the mobile app because this is an experiment. It's a prototype for those who understand what that means. It's basically code we're going to throw away and start over when we figure out what we need to do. <sighs> and uh, it's only on the mobile app. I think it's both an Android and iOS of the Family Tree app. And it looks at characteristics of you, what kind of work you do, how often you're coming, and based on that, we'll offer an opportunity to try the family group experience. Now, the shared family group world is pretty limited right now. I think it only has a message board kind of thing. It tells you when people contribute things to the family line. Uh, it allows you to communicate with one another just as a family and not, uh, not broadly through messages. It's more of like a Facebook kind of a page kind of thing, wall kind of thing. Um, it has to-do lists. It has um, something else. I can't remember what it is. It's been a, been a while since I looked at that one because we're looking at the next round. But that's what that is. We we uh, will probably continue the experiment for at least another several months uh, to see how people behave, what it is people are doing and choosing to do most, and then we'll take that data and go from there. So that's that's what that is. Uh, You'll get an invite based on, I think it's, um, I don't know the full details, but I think it's more on how often you come and how, what the things you've been doing on the site, how regularly you sign in. Okay, let me go down here and see if I got any other questions. Oh, Sue says she's fine with making it harder for everybody. <laughs> um, Oh, okay, James. We'll see you after the graduation. Congratulations. Hello from Alabama and Chicago. Uh, Lynn writes, uh, maybe we need to, to uh, need to run how to not be a crazy LS member on Family Search. I had a non-member <laughs> patron come to the Family Search Center yesterday, a bit perplexed. He had reached out to someone who had made changes on a name. Then the non-member asked the guy... If he was sure he had the right information, the member replied, I'm an elder in the LDS church, and the work I am doing is important. Oh, sure. Well, that's not a very good answer. Nope. <laughs> I told my paper that the LDS guy is a, is a male over 18, and he's full of hot air if the patron is sure he, he has sourced <laughs> his work and then just changed it back. So that's right. Um, oh, yeah, and there's a suggestion from Joanne, just uh, if you want to do a table, Put it in Word, change it to a PDF, and then attach it. That's what others do. Um, so Rebecca asked, my grandfather was born out of wedlock, and his mother died when he was young. So my grandfather never knew who his father was. You mean his biological father. When I find out who his father was using DNA, can I add this biological father as his father and family tree, even though they never lived together as a family unit? You can. Uh, what I ask, if, and I've mentioned this before, if you're doing DNA, DNA, once again, is an approximation. Uh, it really only knows actual fathers if both the grandfather uh, and the child did DNA tests of a particular variety uh, that tests that paternal and maternal thing. Um, so remember, it's a probability. Further back you go, the more unlikely it can be because there's too many variables. Um, but, yeah, you can. I ask you that you not change any of the data that's already there because he lived with a 
parent, a father, a father figure, and he lived with a with a mother uh, figure, and he may have even been adopted. So that's a legitimate fine family. But there isn't an issue necessarily to add an additional parent. You might want to be sensitive to the rest of the family if there's some um, frustration there. You might need to work with them to help them understand why you're doing this. Uh, there's been instances where people go in and change things with DNA and they're, you know, skeletons in the closet that can be very shocking and very frustrating and undeniably denied by the, the biological family if they're still around. So you just need to be sensitive to their feelings about that. Um, uh, Lisa says, can you tell me about the notifications I'm receiving that say temple work has been done for so-and-so? that I helped with. Well, I don't remember the health part. What the, what's going on there is uh, as of oh, a month or two ago, we started uh, sending messages in the messages system. Whenever you uh, print uh, ordinances on a card and you go in and those ordinances are done, we don't know if you're the one that does them. Just when those ordinances are done that you printed, you either took in by yourself or you handed the card to somebody else. When it's done, it's sending you a message to say those ordinances have been recorded. It gives you the date, the temple, and what was recorded. It's there for your um, knowledge to know that it got done. It's there as evidence for you should you believe those ordinances get lost in the future. Um, so that's the intent of that, to try to let people know. Currently, we're only showing it for people who printed the card. The intent. And in the next while, the next quarter or two before the end of the year is to also send that message to people who shared it to the temple and then somebody else got it done or the temple got it done. We'll send you those same messages as well. Um, Sue, so unfortunately, no one has a no one I invited has joined my group. Yeah. That's unfortunate. That's the tough part about these family groups. We got to need to understand if it, no one's going to use them, it's going to be fairly uh, difficult to create these groups. But um, we still believe their value. Um, so Justin asked, now that the family search has implemented ordinance ready, will you stop allowing other ordinance crawlers like Hope Chest and Take a Name to access the tree? Uh, in my experience, other crawlers tend to lock up large numbers of ordinances so the public cannot access them, the rest of the members. Uh, what I'm trying to do, we, we haven't, we've certainly declared that we're not going to have any more ordinance crawlers. So if somebody comes to us and says, we want to write a piece of software that will walk the tree finding ordinances, we're going to say, no thanks, we're not going to allow you to do that. Um, but the ones that have already existed for a while, we're not necessarily saying, you know, go away, you're gone, you're done, you're over with. But I'm trying to work with them to be uh, similar to ordinance ready. In other words, only hand out the same number of ordinances that we would hold, hand out, um, things like that. And so we're in common. I've, I've had those conversations with Take a Name, Hope Chess. We're still getting uh, conversations with them. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. I don't want to you know, destroy their business or whatever, if that's if that's part of their income. So mm -hmm. just want to have them behave the same as ordinance ready. That's what I'm trying to get happen. Uh, yeah, okay, so Cindy says, I've had a patron in the Family Mystery Center this week who mentioned that there are times when the little magnifying glass icon shows their records. But when they go to the source, it tells them they cannot view it there. It's okay. Uh, yeah, this is a problem of whether they can see it at a local family history center or not. So, Cindy, you may need to give me send me some more information to ron at familysearch.org because I don't think we should be showing record hints or okay. showing them on the source list, the sources, uh, if you're searching for sources, if you can't see them where you are. So uh, if you could send me an email with more details, on, if you have any, about who the person was at the Family History Center and what PID they were looking at or what records they were looking at, I'd appreciate it. Um, uh, 
Okay, I think we're ready, Sharif. For wow, one you person. want one of mine? Yeah. Woo! This is from Kim Frame. It says, not to beat a dead horse, but lately there seems to be an extraordinary amount of duplicate records. Are they still working on this problem? The mobile app makes it a little more difficult to attach these records, especially in attaching reason statements. Yes, thanks for all you do. Well, thanks. Um, there is there was a um, a bug that was actually found, and I think they're finishing it up here in the next day or two, where we were actually rehinting sources that had already been attached, and that that's a bug because if it's already been attached and it's the exact same URL in the source, then uh, we shouldn't be uh, advertising it. So. There, I think they've. I think they told me it was fixed, but I think it'll take a couple of days for it to get out, and uh, so that's one problem. The other problem is, is uh, occasionally we run across uh, collections where there's an inordinate amount of image duplicate images, and those duplicate images come from different um, courthouses or whatever that are in the same county sort of thing where they shared records and things, and. We're still working on the best way to figure those out uh, automatically. It's a it's a significant manual job, and that, that's what makes it tough. So uh, just carry on. I know that, that there, it does feel like there's been a lot lately. Okay, this one is from Catherine. She says, I love the family tree keepsakes. My favorite is the vintage-looking one with the light green tree. I spent an hour one day refreshing the page until all of my kids' names were re represented in bold font. But my complaint is, is that the rest of the names on the tree are barely noticeable. This is what? Uh, keepers? Keepsakes. Keepsakes. She says, could the other font be made a bit thicker to make the names that aren't bold more noticeable? Or perhaps all the fonts could print in brown instead of white? Well, the, we, I mean... Put that in there. This is uh, uh, keepsakes is actually a marketing tool, marketing thing, and not necessarily a family tree thing. Um, but I'll put that in there and um, let them know about this. Keepsakes need a uh, heavier font, yeah, uh, uh, for um, smaller names mm -hmm. uh, entry okay hey this is keith thomas and he said would you please explain well, who's the name of the person that did uh catherine first name? okay catherine. catherine if you want the num line number it's number uh, nine through twenty um this is from keith and he said would you please explain the process used by the church when permission is requested to perform an ordinance do they accept verbal approval require written, written evidence of the relationship? What is the average length of time to contact the person giving permission or to obtain this permission? Um, when there's a person in a tree and you need to get permission, uh, so I'm confused a little bit by the question because... Um, well, I can kind how of... How would you explain the process used by the church when permission is requested to perform an ordinance. I think what he wants to know is that does it have to be a written one? And or do they accept a verbal one? Uh, and then there's a couple of ways a person asks for permission to do an ordinance, and that's what I'm confused about. There's you have to ask a member of that family to be able to do those ordinances. That one uh, you need to have them sign a piece of paper. Uh, you can get you can contact support and they'll send you the this, this, it's only like two or three sentences. They'll send you the sentences. They'll just say, print this out and have them uh, sign, sign it. it. And and when you request permission, this is the 110-year rule stuff. Also, you need to – you should have that same form, and then you fill it out, and then they go and you explain why you should have permission to do this, and you can include – and you have to include the name of the person who gave you permission and how to contact them. We don't automatically contact them, just FYI. We only keep that information should someone from that family call in upset because somebody did it, and then we can go contact that person and verify that uh, that you got the permission. 
Um, the other stuff is you contact support and they and you say, hey, there's a ordinance that somebody shared with the temple and I want to do that work. And then they review that and then uh, if they determine that's acceptable, they'll release the ordinance and give it and tell you it's open and you can go reserve it. That one can take uh, you know any amount of time because it's all dependent on how many people are requesting these things. So they have a finite set of people that are looking to resolve these cases and they're going as fast as they can. But if there's you know 10,000 cases in there or, or whatever, then it's going to take a while before they get to it. Um, now our intent in the future is to uh, – anything shared with the temple would be available on the person page. Um, and so you don't have to request it. You just go over there and reserve it. And uh, that's our intention to do in the future. So, you you know, keep requesting, have patience. Um, and then when that day comes that all those ordinances are available, just go to the person and reserve it. And, and you'll have 90 days to get it done if it was shared with the temple. Okay. This is from Dana. Dana. I can't say your last name, Dean. I'm sorry. It says, I understand that a few temples are discarding ordinances cards and not returning them after the ordinances have been completed. Always check to make certain that the recorded work shows up and then file them in my ring binders along with family group sheets and other paperwork for each person. Please, please, please beg the temple department not to discontinue this practice and let each member discard if they so choose. And I don't know, why are they even considering this practice? Uh, well, kind of hesitate to talk about it, but that's what they, they put that question in there. So um, there's only one temple today that is experimenting with that uh, not returning the card process. That temple's in Monticello. And it's actually been uh, very well received by the people there. Um, I want you to imagine the experience of the temple worker when they're dealing with cards. Okay, so you got a big temple, busy temple. They have a session every 20 minutes. The time between uh, sessions is about five to ten minutes. Uh, the number of people that are in the session, probably, I don't know, some of them are as big as, you know, a couple hundred people, 100, 150 people in a session. So imagine you're the temple worker and a session just finished. Remember, they don't have all the cards until everybody's done. And so you're running around collecting all the cards from the other temple workers. And then you've got about, it takes about uh, 15 minutes for a person to go to the locker room and change. So you got to race and take 150 cards down to the recorder's office. You got to hand them the 150 cards and say, hurry up and record them, hurry up and record them, because I only got 10 minutes left because it took you five minutes to get to the recorder's office. I only got 10 minutes left, and they need to be all recorded so I can put them back on the credenza. Mm -hmm. Now, that's just the worker who's taking the cards. So they're pressing the recorder to hurry up and then the recorder hurries as fast as they can to give them the cards they race off and then 10 seconds later or maybe even already before he finished that pile he's got another session sitting there ready to be recorded with another person saying hurry up hurry up they're going to be outdone and we don't want them to wait so as we've done uh, as they've done a the little experimenting they've discovered that in some temples People wait uh, 40 minutes for their cards to come back. And re remember, the most important thing of that uh, card is that it get recorded properly. So um, we're, it's only in one temple, and they're still discussing how that's, how that's going to be and, and if that's good enough, and they haven't made any final decisions to go anywhere. But I, I want to give you some idea of the th kinds of things we're talking about. It's not decided, but the, the talk is more like, well, uh, we want the recorder to have plenty of time to record. So imagine you're a recorder and you're in the new world where cards aren't returned in your temple. And that recorder will get piles and they'll build up. 
but they're not hurrying and rushed. They're making sure that every card is properly recorded, okay? And they'll keep it in a stack, and they'll put rubber bands on it, and they'll put it away in a drawer for that session. And they'll do the next one, and they'll do the next one, and they may go into an evening or it may get finished the next day or whatever. They got plenty of time to get all the things recorded. Every card is working. And they bundle them up in each of the groups for each of the sessions. And then what they plan on doing is a time period later, you know, maybe a week, two weeks, whatever, they uh, they decide, okay, it's time for that session to, to destroy the cards, to say, okay, we're done with the cards, hold them. When they're going to do that, they're thinking, we're going to re-record everything again, every card. And the system, when, it, when they record something that's already been recorded, it'll come up and say, this has already been recorded. So imagine they do that to every card before they decide to destroy the cards, shred them or whatever they do for them. That way they've done it twice. They've verified that every card has been properly recorded. And so now the question is, is that good enough to feel like they're probably not going to miss anything? And it will be recorded. And you still get your message to tell you it's been recorded on that day in that temple. But it eliminates all of this churn and fast pace and pressure to hurry up and get it done. And there's uh, it allows them time to record properly. So, uh, you know, that's the intent. And I understand the struggle that the, the temple department is worried about. And, you know, we can always print other cards. You can write notes to yourself and say, well, I went to the temple on this day for this bid. Some people have even uh, talked about printing two cards. They'll print two cards. The one they take, and they'll keep the other one, and they'll just write down the dates that they took it to the temple so that they can uh, keep track of that. So, you know, that's the reason why I wanted to help make sure you understood why. Okay, I want to go ahead. I'll answer this one, and then you uh, – so this next one, Jim says, my grand great-grandfather ha has a PID that starts with G9-something or other. He should have one that starts with a K. What? What are you talking about? There is some crazy rumor out there in the church that members of the church start with a K. That is not true, okay? The reason why a lot of members look like they have a K is because they were all put into the system at the same time. We went back to 1800, loaded in all the membership records like in the same three months, and, they all, and it just so happened that the count was up at a point where it generated a K. But there's plenty of members that are put in the system now that do not start with a K. There is no rhyme and reason to the PID ID. It doesn't mean anything. The, the letters and the numbers don't mean anything. All we do is it's one big giant number that's like 128 digits long. It might even be 256. And then we just run an algorithm so that you don't have to remember 128 numbers. Instead, we put it together, and it comes out with four letters and numbers and a dash and three letters and numbers. So there's nothing there special about a K. It says he has a read-only page. How could someone change the number and delete his daughters in the relationship? And the answer is they can't. So somebody must have done it that was um, an admin. Could have happened because of a requested change. Uh, you gave me the PID of the daughters, but Jim, I want you to send me an email with a PID of your great grandfather. You have G9GXXXX, so I need that, and I need the names of the daughters and the PIDs of the daughters that were removed. And then I'll go investigate it, send it to Ron at FamilyStarts.org. I'll get it. I'll go investigate it. I'll find out what happened, and then I'll reply to you uh, in the email. Um, another one from over here. Is that a dog? Somebody asked. Daisy. Yes, that's my baby dog. Yeah. Her name is Daisy. She's a... Uh, Puppy Mill Rescue. Yeah. Toy Fox Terrier. Uh-huh. And there was a big boom outside that she didn't like the sound, so she came to Mama to Protect comfort. her. Protect mm -hmm. her. Yeah. So, yes. So, the, the, so I, Den, Denise, I think I explained what happens if the temple doesn't record the ordinance. These cards are proof, and I told you the process they want to go through to verify that every card is recorded properly uh, before they get rid of them. What about the remaining ordinances that need to be done? 
So in that case, David, he said, what about the remaining ordinances? Well, they're, they're trying to develop a process that if you're coming to the temple to do the whole card, they'll have a process that allows you to take that card along through the way. Uh, they'll probably record things along the way. Like if you do baptism confirmation, you're right there. So we'll probably record the baptism confirmation. Then you'll be able to do the I and the E together and then get it recorded because you hand it over during the endowment. The, and they'll get it back to you, and then you can go to the ceiling parents. So they have a process they're working on for that. And then what the recommendation is going to be is print the card with the ordinances you plan to do that trip when you go to the temple. And then when you go to the temple next time, print another set with the ordinances you're going to do that time. So that's sort of the recommendation. And Sue worked in the temple office, so she knows firsthand how crazy it can be, and uh, and this will actually help a lot of things, and it will help in proper recording. Um, okay, so give me the next question, Sri. This is from Pat. I wonder why we have ghost parents on Family Search. It would be so much simpler for me to figure out the duplicate or other parents if I could see them. Is there a possibility of these being shown in the future? How can I make this process not take such a great amount of my time? when the possibility of duplication is already so great. Ghost parents. I've never heard anybody, uh, I've never talked about anything called ghost parents, so I'm going to make an assumption here. I am assuming that ghost parents mean you have a ceiling apparent on the child, and you go look at it on the ordinance tab, and it says, uh, Parents aren't, you know, parents aren't shown here, kind of blue thing, click here for more information kind of thing. And um, and there's a reason for those uh, not being shown. And the reason is um, someone somewhere at some time disconnected those people as parents of that child, okay? The parents were originally there. And then somebody said, those aren't the parents. So they removed the parents. They may or may not have, they, they probably have not replaced the parents with somebody else. And so uh, if I show these, quote, ghost parents, that means I have to show all parents that may have been sealed to that child. Some of them will be clearly wrong, and some of them may or may not be right. And uh, I do not want to put that data in front of you and then have you uh, be frustrated because there's ceilings there that you don't believe should be there. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt that somebody is sealed to other parents. And so we don't want to take the energy and effort to clean that up per se. It, it doesn't make the real ceiling, the actual ceiling and the actual parents any less effective. So, um, if you're concerned about those, I think in there it tells you to contact support. I know that's what takes a little longer, but you can contact support and you say, well, these are the parents that they should be, and they will go look and they will see if uh, those are indeed the parents that they have ordinances on, and they'll take care of it and fix it for you. Uh, yeah, you'll have to wait a little bit as to get the case done, but that's a better way to do it to not uh, frustrate everybody seeing those kinds of things. Originally, I wanted Family Tree to show all ceilings, uh, but as I began examining the data and looking at the database, I felt like that would be uh, too frustrating for, for some people. And so we backed off and said, no, we're not going to do that. But a ceiling apparent is still effective, and that's why it's showing on there. So just contact your support and let them uh, take that issue and get it taken care of for you. Hey, this is from David Howard. It says, in the Memories app on the iPhone, will we be able to choose photos and documents to upload from other apps such as Dropbox? Uh, I don't think we do Dropbox right now anyway. He's just wondering if it'll ever be available. Uh, I don't know. Currently, we do uh, Instagram and Google Photos. I don't think we do Dropbox. Um but you can certainly upload things from Dropbox. You can just take the Dropbox files and and uh, you he's know, wanting to know do you, can it be done on an iPhone? Uh, we don't do any of that on the iPhone. Um, I think because and I'll have to go. That's a good one to check and see if that's something we want to consider doing in the future. Uh, 
Okay. What was his first name? David Howard. It's line 324. Okay, number 324. Hold on a second. That's on. 324? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... So yeah, as more and more people are using the mobile app, then of course there's desire to have more of these features that have been existing on the website for a while. So um, you have to look at this one. I'm I'm right there. What I what the hell is poor people is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody put us the thing to see if we wanted to donate money to the thing. So. Asked us if we help poor people. Yeah. I okay. just thought I do help poor people, but we not do. through family history wrong. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> anyway, it just caught my giggles. All right, this is from Pat Payne. Is there a way you could highlight the edit screen when there is a comment in there? Maybe bold or red, something. Sometimes there, there's a lot of good info in there and we miss seeing it. I'm assuming you're, you're talking about the reason statement. Um, and actually, I think you can, if you go, there's a new feature that was added just a little while ago. Let me just go uh, make sure I have it. There's a way for you to go on a person page, and I'm just go checking to see if I – so I'm not lying. There's a way on the person page just to pull a slider across. So for those of you who have, a, you know, another computer or can do it on a computer while you're watching, go check it out. But you can go to a person page, and on that details view, there's a slider that says details view. And uh, the details view will show you the reason statement uh, right there in line. So I think I think that will satisfy what you're asking. Just go in and turn on the details view, and it'll remember you, that you want that setting. And anytime you go look at those vitals, it'll show the reason statement. Uh, I th let me go see if it does it down on the. And I, they also have details view on the other information as well. So that's what I recommend you go do, and then you won't miss it. You'll see it right there in line. Okay, this one wants to, uh, to not be read, so you need to write it down. Don't, you don't use these for Okay, so, so the numbers are on. Number 327. So, Mary? Yeah. There's a thousand Marys. Somewhere in my... Oh, okay, so long you had to read. 327? Mm -hmm. Sorry, there was something special. Somebody asked us not to read it out loud. Anyway, let's read the next one. This is from Sheila Casper. Can you complete your family tree on family search if you are not sure which brother of your birth father, which brother is your birth father, but you are certain of your paternal grandparents? And how would you list the birth father? Got it. That's two either. brothers, two brothers. And you don't know which two brothers the they person don't know. came from? Yeah, they can't determine that, but they know that the grandparents are right. <clears throat> so these are two two boys, and it's like, how do you mark which one? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think you can uh, until you have more information. Yeah. Um, if you're – so the other possibility you have is it is acceptable to seal – children to grandparents if you're looking for sealing so you can do that uh, you have to hook them up to the grandparents you might and that way you have to put them in as a foster or a guardian kind of thing and you can seal them to the grandparents until then uh, I, you, you probably just have to I don't know you probably have to link them to the uh, others out there have done this so I think you link them to the grandparents and and you could link them to both of the parents and say on the on the relationship, we don't know which of the brothers uh, had this child, so we're linking it to both. And if you find that information, you know, correct it or something, put a source on. Yeah. So, but if you're looking for ceilings and you have proof of the kids, you can certainly put them against the grandparents' guardianship or something, and then do the ceilings. Hey, this is from Terry Manning, and I think we've kind of already answered this one, but he wants to know, or she, I'm sorry, I'm a, that's a different name, says, any idea when the change to family search that will pull names from one shared temple list rather than within the temple districts? Yeah, I uh, answered that one so earlier. So it's coming, he thinks. First half of next year. year. So hang tight, it's coming. I was out there today, and I heard, heard talk about it, so. 
<laughs> anyway, this is from Elmer Zink. And he said, when will the family circles that permit directly related living tree, family tree users to view the share that to view the share of the same directly related living family members, how will that future work and how many generations of living will be able to see each other? All right. So he's talking about the shared family groups. We don't have circles in family church. Um, circles is a concept that is interesting that anybody would even know about it, but they have some inside information as, uh, oh, well, no, I don't, because they have this gospel, there's a new app that the, that the church is working on to help include people together, like all the deacons and all the teachers and communicate with each other. And they call those circles. And um, we don't have circles, but this will be a shared family group. So the way that's going to work is you go create a shared family group, and then you invite people to come to that and participate in that shared family group. If they accept the shared family group, then they, they get included in the group and, uh, Anything that's done in that group, they all see. Uh, it has a shared family reservation. What well, in particular they were worried about? Um, oh, and to know what can many... they see? Uh -huh. And the answer is uh, anybody that you invite has the option of putting in persons into, uh, eventually will be able to put persons into that shared tree area. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever they choose to share. If they don't want to put anything in there, then they won't contribute anything but they'll still be able to go there and modify things and look at things. Uh, if they choose to add themselves and their family, that, that's their choice. We have to allow people to choose what parts of their family they're willing to share with a, with that particular group. Okay. Um, uh, let me see here. Somebody asked, uh, I have baptism that need to be done that w I would be, I would, I'm assuming like to be present for when they are done. Do I have to provide my own witnesses and proxy baptizer and baptized? I, uh, somebody else would have to answer that who works in the baptistry, but I think the intent is, yeah, you got to bring somebody that's going to be baptized and who's going to be doing the baptizing, uh, I think is normal, um, unless you turn it over to the temple, uh, but you want to be there to see it. So you don't have to have your own witnesses because I think the, the baptistry will provide witnesses uh, for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can check with your local temple to get more detailed information about how that works. I think different temples may be slightly different. Okay. okay, this is from Linda. She says, years ago I made an account and then I realized I have two accounts now. I think the first one was as a, as a non-member account. Can I combine them? Uh, nope, <laughs> since you created a membership one, you can't combine them together. Um, so I guess maybe what she wants to know, is there some way to potentially just have one? Yeah, just quit using the non-member one. Oh, well, yeah. But I, you just, just quit using it and you're fine. Um, there's no way to destroy it. No, you can contact. It. If you have an account that you don't want anymore, you can contact support and tell them you'd like them to delete that account. Mm -hmm. And they'll do that. And then that'll make it so nobody can get into it and nobody can use it. And it'll be essentially gone. If there's data that you put in the private area for that other account, yeah, you probably still have that data as memories if that's the stuff. Uh, I don't know if they would be, they may be able to move it around. I'm trying to remember. It. I don't know if we allow that moving between two private areas. Hmm. So um, I suspect if you're a member, you're going to want to use your member account. And so I would just abandon the, the public one. Okay. And if you want it closed just for security reasons, then contact support and ask them to delete the account. Great idea. This is from Elaine. While holding the mouse on the colored icons on a person page, such as ordinances, it no longer states what the icon represents. This was helpful in training newbies on family search. Uh, I think that that is um, only on the pop-up card. Okay. Um, let me go. Uh, there is a legend over on the right-hand corner that you can click on every ordinance tab on every person that shows you all the colors and what they mean. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, that legend is on every person page. It's also on every, it's on your reservation list. And I believe if you pick one where the ordinances aren't, uh, it's a card. Let me see here. 
I, I think the ones on the person page probably are not uh, hover over stuff. But if you look at a card, let me go look at a card here real quick on the system. I'll go look at a card, and if it's a pop-up card, it's called a person card. That's the one where you click their name, and it pops up and gives you their name and their PID and their birth and death, how many sources, how many discussions, how many memories, and temple ordinances. On that one, you can hover over the ordinance, and it'll tell you uh, what state it's in. Oh, yeah, I can see like that. It, these are ordinances are done, so it says endowment completed in St. George, Utah in 1877. If it's uh, if it's colored, it'll also say stuff like on hold for temple or shared with the temple. That I think is only on the pop up person card, and there but there's a legend on every person page, so you can train them on the legend there just to go look at the legend know. if they want to know. Okay, <clears throat> this is from Tamara Ashlock. Printing. I don't think I could print from memories, photos, or documents, but then I found that the right click button and it works most of the time sometimes I cannot can you tell me what drives this function I'm not sure if that was on a person page or in their gallery doesn't specify well you can't really do a printing from looking at it in a in the person page so if you open it uh, it still isn't a print I suspect you're doing a browser print um, yeah, that's a copy image. Could you copy it and then? Yeah, but it'll only it copy the small one. Oh yeah. You can copy the image or save image as. Um, uh, I don't think you can share with a printer. So what I what I do when I want to have a picture that's a memory and I want to print it for something, I want to get the full picture. So for any of these memories, you can go and you can uh, download, I believe. You can go to Actions, and you can go Download. And so I do download the picture, and then I go print the picture. Because that way I get the original picture, in, you know, however uh, yeah. good it is, in, a, in, in its best form. And then I can arrange it how I want on paper, multiple versions of it or whatever, and then print it. So that's what I recommend. I think the printing you're doing is just printing from... The browser telling you you can print and I don't think you're going to get a very good experience but if I'm wrong please send me an email Ron at FamilySearch.org and let me know what you're doing and show me some screenshots or the steps you go through to do that and the browser you're on and uh, I'll go take a look so I think we've hit our 830 but I want to go through the list and see if I have any other questions before we finish up here Uh, yeah, you can't merge two accounts. I know you can't do that. But they could take a non-member account and turn it into a member account. But since you already have a member account, then you're stuck. Yes, you just stop using it. How yeah. Becomes okay, hey, everybody, thank you very much for your yes. time. I hope this was worth it. We answered a lot of questions today. I had a whole pile of on my phone that I'd been working on for the last couple of weeks. Yep. And then we did a whole mess of them in the thing. But I know there's always questions out there, so keep asking them. We're kind of getting, you know, there, I don't we're know. Getting, how, we're, we're getting thin on our list. We're getting thinner. Yeah, we, we don't. That's I, okay. But That's okay. But keep, keep asking. asking and if you think of something, uh, just jump right to Family History Run and put it in right then when you're thinking about it so you don't forget. And then the question will be there, and we'll continue to answer them in order. Share this with your other friends if it's useful. If this is useful, tell them about it too because I'm, I'm just looking to help everybody I can, and I'm sure they have questions too. So um, keep them coming, and we'll keep doing it. I don't think we've set times in June yet for our stuff, but no, we haven't. I'll sit down and we'll figure out times that we're going to do it in June and post it. Remember, if you're, if you're on this thing, if you I think if you friend the page, It'll actually send you a notice when uh, when we identify when we're going to have our events. But I would imagine probably two weeks from now. Probably. It kind of looks what our June looks like. Yeah. I, but anyway, I, thank you very much. I'm grateful for all you do. You make, oh, you make Family Search successful. I mean, I do stuff, but you, you do all the real work. It's, and uh, It's so exciting when people recognize us and come up and tell us what you're doing. And it's just... Utterly amazing. Uh, amazing at all the things you're doing. I and did. it just inspires us. Yeah. It really does. 
it's just amazing. We're 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 close to one point. You know, we're we're honing in on one point three billion sources. It's just like amazing to think about that. When just like four years ago, we had a con, uh, four, five, oh, three, yeah. three and a half, four years ago. I remember had, the contest. It was uh, in 2012. So how long was that? That's been seven, seven years. Seven years. So it was like uh, six, five, four, so seven, six, five years ago. Five, four, big five years ago. Big celebration when we they got to right, When we got to 10 million. To 10 million. And, uh, and now we have almost, one phenomenal. Point, almost 1.3 billion. So thank you very much for all you do. Have a good evening. And uh, something I noticed the other day <coughs> is I was just doing you know, once in a while you have to sit back and think about where we've come from and where we're at. And I realized something that, that I'd like to share with you that I thought was interesting to me. Um, the Lord tries to help influence us as often as he can. Yes. He wants to inspire us and motivate us to do the right things, to make the right choices so that we can have the happiest life that we can have here on this earth and so that we can be prepared and, and become like him in such a way that we have greater opportunities later after death. Yeah. And I, I was thinking about family history and I was thinking about this concept and I realized Family history to me gives you the most opportunities to have our Heavenly Father tap you on the shoulder and tell you you're doing great. You're doing the right things. This is a blessing for somebody on the other side. And, boy, that's something I want for myself. That's something I want for my family. That's yeah. something I want for my kids and my grandkids because the more they feel those feelings of doing good, the more they're going to notice it they when they're in it. the real world. And, and, you know, they're not yeah. doing family history. They, they pick up trash. They help somebody else. They allow someone to take the parking place or they, someone's blinkering to get into a lane and you slow down so that they can move over into the lane. All of those things, our Heavenly Father tickles your heart a little bit and said, I did a good thing. Mm -hmm. And family history just provides a way to have more experiences that tell you Heavenly Father cares and Heavenly Father wants you to do the right things. And that's what I encourage you. Somebody sent me an email that says, I'm retired. I, I like going into Family History Center, but Family History Heavenly Search is helping everybody do everything, so I'm, no, I'm not, I have no value. And no. the answer is bunk. The answer is get out there, talk to people, share the experiences you have, help them. Do some family history and feel those experiences and tell them, are you, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel great. Well, I want to tell you what that feeling is. That's yeah. Heavenly Father and the Spirit telling you your you're doing something good, something he would like you to do. And remember that feeling because you're going to feel it other times through your weeks and months and know that when you do that, you're doing good. You're doing right. So uh, I just that just came to my mind. I thought about it and wrote it down a little bit and just wanted to let you know that it's amazing. It is. It and, really is. And thank you. And a lot of those experiences, a lot of those discovery things happen because of what you're doing in the tree, Yeah. that we can provide those experiences quicker for new people that come because you've already done great work in the tree. Yeah. I, yeah. I had that top conversation with a girl today. So that was really cool. All right. Thank you for all you do. Have a good evening. And we will see you in about two weeks. Yeah, probably two. We'll give you the times. You'll see it. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Oops. Wait, I pushed the wrong button. I I pushed don't don't end. Oh. I just we haven't